Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be reviewing this 7-inch touchscreen Android head unit made by Pumpkin. A link to this head unit will be included in the video description, and I have also released an installation video for this head unit a couple weeks ago, so be sure to check it out. This head unit operates on an Android 8.0 interface, is equipped with Bluetooth, hands-free, navigation, backup camera, Wi-Fi internet access, supports micro SD cards and USB drives, can play movies and much more. The best way to describe this unit, it's basically like having a small computer built into your dashboard. Auto Pumpkin does include all the required items to install this head unit, some other items such as a backup camera, OBD2 scanner, and a couple other add-ons not shown here are extra. Those items are also on their web page for this head unit. Standard accessories and components included with this head unit is a detailed manual and wiring diagrams, radio bezel, bracket with fasteners, the main head unit harness, various RCA outputs and inputs for a DVR, backup camera, amp, hands-free external microphone, extra outputs for an external screen, and external USB ports. Also included is an external Wi-Fi and GPS antenna. The dimensions of the head unit this is past the rear plastic frame, is 178 millimeters by 100 millimeters, or 7 inches by 3.9 inches. Then the step portion where the plastic frame meets the metal box is the largest point. This is 182 millimeters by 104 millimeters, or 7.2 inches by 4.1 inches. The depth of the head unit starting from the stepped plastic to the rear is 168 millimeters or 6.6 .6 inches. The first startup after hooking up the power will be slow, but after that the head unit will start up immediately. This takes roughly less than a second. This head unit is equipped with 4 gigabytes of memory and has 32 gigabytes of storage for apps and files. All options and applications are quite easy to access in the interface. First, we have some of the main functions from the drop-down menu at the top of the screen. First, you'll see the Wi-Fi, which is currently connected to my home network. I have a secured network, so a password needs to be entered. Once connected, you'll be able to see the signal strength, and the head unit will remember this network for future usage. Next is a Bluetooth option where you're able to connect various devices, such as your phone and accessing numbers. I'll show you towards the end of the video how to connect your phone. Next is a volume which can be controlled by the bar on the screen or volume dial. After that we have a brightness adjustment. This unit will automatically dim when turning on your vehicle's lights if you have that wire connected. And there is also an option to manually control this feature in the menu. The equalizer has various presets or you can control everything manually. If you have a subwoofer, this can be controlled by an equalizer. And we have a loudness option to enhance the sound output. The fader, just like any other stereo, gives us control which speakers are used and how much output they have. And finally a system clearing setting that shuts down any apps in the background for a smoother operation. Now if you want to go back to any previous menus, this can be done by the screen or the back button on the left. Setting up the radio stations is quite easy and 12 presets can be activated. Simply type in the station you want by using the keypad, then press and hold the preset on the menu. This head unit can receive data broadcasted by a radio station, such as the station's name and the name of the songs being played. The equalizer can also be accessed through here too. For navigation, this can be accessed from the buttons on the bottom of the main screen or on the side of the head unit buttons. In the menu, there are options available to change your navigating program. Right now I have this set up with Google Maps. Dragging my finger across the screen, I am able to move the map around quite easily. Then using both fingers, this allows me to zoom in or zoom out of the map as well. For music from a storage device, once that storage device is plugged in, it will automatically prompt the files. Each of those storage devices can be selected at the top. The files can be selected through the menu by scrolling. The bar can be slid to a certain part of the song and the music can be played in sequence, randomly picked, or repeated. The equalizer can also be accessed through here, just like the radio. For videos, as a sample I have one of my future videos shown here. With the 1024 by 600 pixel screen, 
This gives a crisp and clear image. We have full control of what part of the video or movie we'd like to see, video size, and easily viewing for other videos through the playlist options. I do have a safety installed so my videos cannot be watched while the vehicle is in motion. However, this can be disabled in the options menu. Going through the menu, there are a couple features for additional controls and personalization. First is a network and internet. Next is the apps and notifications. For car setting, this option to watch the video while the vehicle is in motion is located here. First going under the personal settings, the other options are fairly self-explanatory. However, I think this is a cool feature where you're able to select the color of your LED lights to match the interior in your vehicle. Navigation settings. Then driving settings. There are some options here to personalize the backup camera setup and steering wheel controls if your vehicle is equipped with that. Display settings allows us to select the text size and viewing type along with wallpapers and brightness. Sound settings. Screenshot settings. Storage of the head unit so you're able to see the current space taken and space left. Service and security. User accounts. Accessibility to make the unit a little easier to use for hands-free operation or those who have a hard time seeing. Next, we can see all the apps installed by selecting the option on the home screen. We have quite a few different applications here ranging from a video or photo viewing, music, maps, calculator, internet browser, etc. The main menu style can also be changed to a different setup which shows a few more applications and compared to the other menu. Going over the file viewer, I'm using my cover photo as an example from the video. You can inspect the image closer by zooming in and then zooming out to view the image as a whole. For the Torque app, Auto Pumpkin does have a wireless OBD2 transmitter available and the Torque app is able to display that information. This transmitter is plugged into the vehicle's OBD2 port and you'll see the lights illuminated on the transmitter. You'll need to connect to the Wi-Fi signal from the transmitter and enter a password which is found in the instructions. Displaying all the apps in the head unit, scroll over to the Torque app. Once started, we're in the main menu of the app. First, we can scan the computer for any fault codes. If codes are found, they can be erased. Moving over to the live data, this will show all the options which is supported by the vehicle. So for this truck, I can view the RPM, coolant temperature, throttle position, vacuum pressure, speed and acceleration. Each window is customizable, so you can pick the data you will be able to see. With the GPS, the app can also calculate the performance statistics of the vehicle, such as the 0 to 60 and drag times. This is something that should be left for a controlled environment, like a racetrack and not public roads. For the reverse camera, this is activated by selecting the reverse gear. The camera's view will automatically show up on the screen, the radio or music will be turned off so your full attention is on reversing the vehicle. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, the trailer ball can be seen so this is great for maneuvering to a trailer as well. Once you switch the transmission from reverse, the camera will shut off and your radio or music will come back on. To pair your phone with the head unit, it's not overly hard. Ensure both the head unit and your phone has the Bluetooth activated. Once on your phone, search for the device which should be labeled as car kit and type in the generic password. This can be changed in the head unit settings. Allow it to connect, pair the devices, and you'll know this has been completed successfully once your phone shows up under the paired devices. As a quick sample with surfing the internet, this can be done through the Wi-Fi or tethering through your smartphone. Overall, I'm extremely impressed with the quality and ease of use of this head unit. The sound quality is excellent, 
certainly much better than I was expecting out of these old Ranger speakers. With all the features this head unit has, comparing it to many other known units on the market, this unit by Pumpkin is very affordable and compatible. The design of the head unit is very clean and feels well made. I have always been a bit picky with some of the touchscreen devices on the market. The operation of this touchscreen is quite smooth, fluid, and doesn't appear to be affected by cold weather either. With the up and down weather we've been having since I installed this head unit, so far I've tested it in minus 15 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I had a couple viewers ask me a couple different questions about the screen glare and if I found it distracting while driving. Unfortunately we haven't had many sunny days, but on those sunny days I have had, I haven't seen any issues. After editing the video, I did find the screen was actually showing more glare on the video than in person. As for being a distraction, no problems there either. Even at night the screen isn't overpowering with the illumination where it may affect your road viewing. Have you purchased this product in the past? Please be sure to share your experiences in the comments below to help out fellow viewers. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me. And be sure to also check out my other social media pages such as Instagram, Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Thank you for watching.